Hello, my beautiful people. I just wanted to make a quick video about the Great Conjunction. Why, you might ask? Well, because there is a lot of clamoring and talk about the end of the world that I am seeing in my news feed. And if I'm seeing it, there's a possibility that you are seeing it too. And of course, I am here to bring peace and love and harmony and all that good stuff. And I figure, you know, why not share this information and you guys hear it from someone you know, love, and trust, right? So it doesn't matter if you are a, you know, a believer, if you're an atheist, if you're a spiritualist, you know, or agnostic, it really doesn't matter. Um, the information I'm going to share with you is just basically just based on factual information. So, um, at the end of the day, December the 21st is the winter solstice. Now that is just a given fact. We have solstices that mark the changing of the seasons. That goes without saying there's a winter solstice, there's a summer solstice, there's a spring equinox, all of that. That has been in place since the beginning of time. Um, however, as far as this great conjunction happening to take place during the winter solstice, I think that's pretty interesting and actually pretty divine and pretty cool. As far as the great conjunction, that is when Jupiter and Saturn are actually going to be aligned now, they're not going to touch each other and nothing's going to explode or anything like that. They actually really are still going to be pretty far apart from a actual physical standpoint. But from a visual standpoint, um, as we view them with our human eyes and even with the, um, you know, the uh, tools that we have to look into the cosmos, it will be, it will appear to be that they are very close to one another, as close, the closest that they've ever been, okay? Now, there have been other conjunctions throughout the ages. Um, even from a biblical standpoint, there have been conjunctions, uh, one of which was the when the star of Bethlehem was created. And this one is likened unto that. So many people are actually saying that they believe that the uh, star of Bethlehem may possibly be seen. That's neither here nor there. I'm not saying it will or not. I don't even know. I'm just the messenger. So what I can tell you though, is that Jupiter and Saturn will be aligning and that is called the great conjuncture. Well, why is this such a big deal? Well, the reason why people are saying that the world is going to end the truth is that the world is going to end as we know it. When I was younger, there was a group called the Fifth Dimension, and they actually had a song called The Age of Aquarius. Now, I, I might be aging myself. Some of you are listening may remember this song, but I just thought it was a song. But no, they were talking about an actual event. They were looking forward to this day like this day. They didn't know when the day was going to happen. They didn't know it was going to be on December 21st, 2020, but they knew there was going to come a time when Saturn and Jupiter were going to align and the Great Conjunction was going to happen again. And when that time happened, it would usher in a new age, which is called the Age of Aquarius um, or the Golden Age, so to speak. And so basically Jupiter, the planet Jupiter, now if you're not into astrology or astronomy or anything like that, it's really okay. Um, but you got to think about as above, so below. Um, just from a general standpoint, if you at least know that from a scientific standpoint, that the moon has an impact on the waves, right? If you've spent any time on the beach, you've heard or or have nautical experience, you know that the moon has an impact on the waves. That's as above, so below. So the, um, the movement of the planets, the energetic, um, yeah, the energy, the energetic frequencies that are created during the planetary shifts and the movements and all that definitely impact our earth. 
that's why we have a changing of the seasons and, and things of this nature. So Jupiter has been known to be the source of higher learning, wisdom, applied learning, which is so knowledge. Knowledge in of, in of itself is one thing, but applied knowledge. Also an awakening. Um, it is a prep planet preparing you for success and abundance. Saturn has been known to relate to structure, discipline, awareness, universal alignment, and then knowledge also. And so these planets are coming into alignment. Now, when you, when you talk about astrology and your zodiac sign, all of these signs have so many more meanings like, and I'm not an astrologer by any stretch of the imagination, okay? I've just been doing a little bit of studying because I, I, I've just always, I mean, I knew I was an Aquarius when I was younger and I used to look at my sign and uh, I identify, you know, my personality with the traits that are described by the Aquarius. I mean, it just describes me to a T. So I've always had a little interest in some of that stuff and I was intrigued by that and I just, you know, I felt like if God created the cosmos, which he did, right? I didn't attribute that to man or the science of it all. I always attributed that to my heavenly father. Like he created it. He gave us our personalities. Like he set that all up and he gave man, you know, the knowledge and the information about that. So anyway, um, these planetary signs as they relate to the zodiac signs as well like the planets and where they are um in your signs has to do with you know the impact of your behavior your personalities and things of that nature so with that said with these two planets aligning and the impact it's going to have on humanity has to do with an increase in creativity technology awareness which is ushering in that new age what is called the golden age so it's also spoken of in scripture where it says knowledge will increase exponentially so these uh great conjunctions have also happened throughout you know biblical times it has been spoken of during floods it has been talking talked about during the exodus you know, there's been different times that this conjuncture has taken place uh, thousands of years apart. Now, I think the conjuncture can happen maybe every 20 years or something like that. But a great conjuncture like the one we're having now, like I said, is likened unto the time of when the star of Bethlehem was seen and directing it to the birth of Christ. And that, and so when it's ushering in, in this new age, we're coming out of the age of Pisces and going into the age of Aquarius. And if you know a little bit about the zodiac sign, the um, symbol for the age of Pisces are the fish. And so, you know, the fishers of men. And I'm not going to get into all that, but the age of Aquarius is the water bearer and how Christ was going to, God was going to pour out his spirit onto the earth. So, I'm going to leave it at that. You have to do your own homework on it to tie it all in together. But I just wanted to give you a sense of ease as far as, you know, there's not going to be the two planets touching in an explosion in and in a nuclear, you know, event and the world's coming to an end. Are you going to wake up on the 21st and all hell's going to break loose? You know, no, like, no. So when people are like chicken little and the sky is falling type stuff, that's not what is supposed to be happening here. So, and I ain't here to be telling you what is or is not. I'm just telling you that the premise of it is that it is the end of the world as we know it. That there is an energetic shift taking place. That there is a shift in paradigm that we're entering into a new age and that that old things are passing away and all things are becoming new. That's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that with the onset of the pandemic, the economic uncertainty, the social unrest, the human trafficking, the pedophilia, 
the just all these things that have been unearthed and uncovered were all a part of our learning and our awareness to bring those things that have been hidden to the surface so that we could face them and understand that, you know, these are the things that were hidden so that we can see them and acknowledge them and, and do away with them, right? Those dense energies. It is to bind us together as humanity with a common cause because at the soul level, no human will agree that any of these things are righteous. And that's why you're starting to see it doesn't matter what level of economics you are, what level of, um, well, what skin color you are or what religion you are. When you start to see the type of things that are taking place in this world, everybody that has a soul is concerned and they just want justice and peace for everyone. And so gradually and over time, that is the world that is going to be created. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. And this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. So if you guys go look up the word Corona, it actually means heart. So anyway, I'm not going to keep you any longer. I just wanted to put you at ease about the sky is falling and the end of the world. Um, so if anybody asks you, you just tell them it is the end of the world as we know it. Okay. Now, what does this mean for you real quick? What does it mean for you? What can you do? You do not, you don't have to do anything other than acknowledge, you know, look within, look within yourself. What what dense energies, what stinking thinking, what negative self-talk do you have that you would like to do away with? What out with old, in with the new behaviors would you like to experience in, in this new beginning? What new beginning would you like to have? Because you can have it. You can ride this wave of the new beginning. You can have what you say you have. You can be who you say you are. When Moses said, when they ask who sent me, who shall I say sent me? I am. Tell them I am sent you. So write down your I am affirmations. I am that I am. Whatever you say that you are, you are. Period. You are wonderfully made. So start dreaming again, start believing again, start writing again. And now is a really good time for new beginnings. So I pray your peace. I pray your abundance. I'm sending light and love to each and every one of you. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you for listening. And I hope this has helped in some small way. Bye-bye now.